systems application product in the in data processing. Okay. All right, but okay. like you said, it's basically a tool to record data. It's a software application which records data, finance data, purchasing data, manpower, HR data. Basically a tool to record data. But before understanding SAP, SAP is an ERP. Let's see what an ERP is. Enterprise Resource Planning. Enterprise refers to okay. enterprise refers to if you're writing just tell me I'll I'll stop I'll pause and I'll pace myself mm, uh, No, you can continue all right So enterprise refers to our business organization Resource refers to the various resources of the organization. Various resources would refer to uh, manpower, materials, machinery, money. All these are various resources of an organization. And planning? Planning refers to planning of these resources. Every resource has a dedicated department or a team to plan its activities. The finance function, the finance resource is being managed by the finance team. Money is managed by finance. Mm -hmm. Materials is managed by the procurement team, purchasing team. Then we have manpower managed by the HR department. Then we have uh, machinery managed by the factory or production so every resource has a dedicated department to plan the activities now why do we need to plan the resources what's the reason why do we need to plan <laughs> because in business we need to plan all <laughs> because yeah. uh, right uh, it's very important for the benefit of the company. Yeah. So see, the objective of an organization, What? If, where do we run our business? Uh, what do we want? What is the objective of running a business? Why do we run a business? Uh, how benefits? Profits, that's it. Mm. Mm. Well, I don't know. If you, if you make a business, it's because you want to um, uh, make profits, that's all. Yes, yes. The, the motive of running a business is profits. Everything else yes. comes next. If we are not making profits year after year, there's no point in continuing. We might as well close. That's, true. that's all. Now, we cannot run a business just like that in a haphazard manner, just as we like. There has to be a certain structure. You have to follow a set process. Yeah. For that precise reason, we need to plan the activity. Management needs... Management needs information to take proper decisions now this can you hear me
Hello. Hello, Ram. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, now yes. All right. I'm sorry, some internet connected. No problem. No problem. So, I was saying management needs data, information to take better decisions. Decisions have a bearing on profits. Now, this information or data is stored in an ERP. These are stored in a system. The ERP helps structure our data in a proper format so that whenever we need, we can pull up reports and take proper decisions. That's the mm -hmm. job of an ERP, to, to structure, to keep the data in a proper format. Now there are various ERPs available in the market. We have uh, Oracle, and there's BAN. Microsoft has its own MS Dynamics. JD Edwards is another famous ERP. Mm -hmm. And there's something called Sage, very popular in uh, Europe. Scotland, Ireland, UK, uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Sage, right. and they have Sun Systems, uh, lots, lots of other ERP products, Tally, PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft is a very user-friendly ERP, but it's now been purchased by Oracle, Oracle has purchased PeopleSoft. One such ERP is SAP. I'm putting SAP on top because it's a global leader in ERP market. SAP was started in nine, 1972 by five, 1972? yeah, 72 by five IBM engineers. They were working in IBM. X IBM employees. They started SAP in a small garage. So, now let's see the architecture. Architecture, what, what is architecture? The, uh, what? architecture but about business or about because the, I have one friend that is architecture but <laughs> yeah yeah basically the components that go in building a product or oh. architecture is a term used in construction business yeah so what are the components that go in building and the product SAP there are three layers in SAP. Presentation layer, application layer, database. Mm -hmm. Presentation layer is the physical screen, how SAP looks like, the physical appearance of SAP. We also call it the GUI, Graphical User Interface. I'll come to application layer in a bit. Now database, once the user posts entry, he passes journal entries and it goes and sits behind somewhere in tables. A huge collection of data is called database. Okay. Now it's not enough it's not sufficient that the user has posted entries he has posted uh, 100 journal entries so his work is done he would also need to pull up reports at a future point of time month end reconciliations uh, pull up reports at the end of the year so he would need these data at the future point of time the application layer helps in retrieval of data. The application layer consists of a set of programs which helps the user in pulling up data from the 
database section. Now, more about architecture, we need not look into it because it's the subject of a basis consultant. Just as we have FICO, there's another module called basis. Now, SAP is divided into modules, basically. We have functional module and we have technical module. We are functional people, finance, FICO, materials management, sales and distribution, production planning, warehouse management, quality management, plant maintenance, project systems, HR, or we call it human capital management in SAP, logistics. There are, there, there are lots of functional modules, more than 80 functional modules. Retail, yeah. oil and gas, uh, then for uh, airline industry, banks. Mm -hmm. All these people are functional consultants. Now technical, we have basically two technical modules, ABAP, okay. basis. ABAP refers to advanced business application programming. These are the programmers. They write new programs, codes. They basically help the, they support the functional consultant. For example, for example, there's a standard SAP report, a sales report. A sales report which states first column serial number, second column date, third column customer number, fourth column quantity sold, fifth column rate, okay, yeah. and uh, total value, the last column. Now the client insists, the client wants that an additional column be inserted in the same report uh, asking for the tax asking for the output tax that he needs to pay. Okay. The standard report does not show the output tax. So what we will do, we will go to this ABAPR, we will tell him I need an additional field here, just make it appear in this report. He will do some coding, he will write a new program and all those things and insert that column in the standard report. For this, you need to know some languages, some uh, C, C++, SQL, all these things you need to know. Basis, these are the, uh, he issues the, uh, you know, your login ID, password, he gives user authorizations, who should do what transaction, uh, is he authorized to do such a transaction, is the user authorized to do such a transaction? Uh, he maintains the server both physically and through the system. He's basically the security guy, the systems administrator, the basis okay. consultant. So for this, compulsorily you should have knowledge of an operating system, some security issues, firewall, proxies, you know, internet, uh, IP addresses, all these things you should have knowledge of, networking. So each module has its own specialized background that you should be aware of. So to study FICO, it is essential that you know the background of finance. Mm -hmm. What is the financial flow? First we post journal entries, then ledger accounts, then trial balance, manufacturing or trading, profit and loss account, and finally balance sheet. So, okay. 
Pensan. Ay, ah, ok. No. No. No? No, yes, no, yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Okay. So, so we basically have two kinds of people in SAP. One person is an end user. Mm -hmm. The other person is called a consultant. Now who do you think would an end user be? Have you heard of the term end user? Mm, no, I heard about consultant because in many positions they ask for mm -hmm. consultant in SAP. Okay. But for end user, no, I don't know is is like for example in some companies uh, someone asks for information and the consultant okay. provide information to the end user but no right. have you have you heard of the term end user somewhere forget sap let's not talk about sap for a minute have you heard of okay. the term end user anywhere somewhere mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Well, in my, in my company, yes, but I don't know if it's the same, like the last person that needs the information. Right, right. So, you would have downloaded some softwares, okay? So, in your personal computer, you would have downloaded some softwares. You would have downloaded some VLC media player or Skype okay, or... Yeah some softwares or the other you would have downloaded what does it say at the start when you are downloading the file it says something end user license agreement only if you put a tick mark on that it will allow you to download it from the internet mm -hmm. so end user, end user is the final person who uses the product he enjoys mm -hmm. the product see another example simple example bikes some people are mad about bikes yes. uh, they do all kind of modifications to their bikes they want their handlebar to be in a certain shape they want the petrol tank to be in a uh, uh, to you know to have a certain design the wheel mm -hmm. should be of such width they want some double headlights uh, the silencer should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, of some size, something unique to them. So they go to the mechanic and give these specifications that, you know, I want a bike to be modified as per my needs. The mechanic then does all the necessary modifications and delivers the bike to the... Mm -hmm person who wants it to be done. So the mechanic is a consultant and the, okay. pers the person who gives these specifications is an end user. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. The mechanic understands the requirements of the end user and designs a particular system for him. He designs the bike in a certain manner for him. Hello? Yeah, 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 I understand. All right. Uh, it's very good example. <laughs> sorry? It's very good example. <laughs> okay. So, similarly, coming back to our SAP scenario, say there's, there's, there's this uh, ABC air conditioning. ABC is in the manufacturing of manufacturing air conditioners. 
AC manufacturing. Now they are using say they are using uh, Sage as their ERP. They're using Sage as their ERP for about 10, 15 years. Now they wish to migrate to SAP. Say you are ABC manufacturing, what will you do next? Once that you have decided you want to have SAP in your system. When you decide to change SH to ACP? Yeah. Mm. What you need to transfer the information. Sorry? You need to transfer the information. Yeah, but uh, you need to have SAP into your system for that, right? Well, yes, right, right. You have to remove Sage and you yes. have to implement SAP for that. Only then information will be transferred. Yes, you, yes, you need, yeah. Right. You, you need people who can help you remove Sage and implement SAP in your systems. You are going to contact such people who can help you do that. Mm -hmm. Companies like, you know, IBM. These are called consulting companies. Ah, uh, okay. You're going to contact yes. a few companies like IBM, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Deloitte, CTS, Capgemini. There are thousands of IT companies available. You're going to contact three or four of them. Whoever is going to give a least quotation, you're going to give the contract to them. Right? Mm -hmm. Now uh, let's say for example IBM has provided the least quotation. So ABC gives the contract to IBM to remove Sage and implement SAP. IBM comes to the client's place. This person is called the client or he's also known as the end user. IBM is the consulting company will implement SAP in their system and remove Sage. Mm -hmm. Now end user, the job role of an end user is very limited. There are no challenges at work. Okay. You can go at 9, come back at 6, relax to life. Mm -hmm. Uh, no challenges, a good family life. I mean, there are pressure only during month end or year end. That's it. The advantage is you can come back home. Uh, no pressure. You have a family life. Mm -hmm. But a consultant, on the other hand, does not enjoy those benefits. An implementation, a typical implementation, even for a very small, small, small organization. Uh, let's say, for example, ABC has only one factory, one plant, one sales depot, no branches. Okay. Even for a company so small, SAP implementation takes about eight months to one year. Well, it's yeah, a huge okay. process. It's a huge process. Uh, the consultant has to understand the needs of the end user and thereby then deliver a system to him. It's not an easy task. But the flip side, the good news is that's the reason they are paid so heavily. Okay. So SAP consultants make a lot of money. They make, I, I can't even say sky is the limit. There is no limit to how much money a SAP consultant makes. 
So, mm -hmm. but then you'll have to make a choice where you want to go. Do you want to? You want as... life or you want money? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, see, uh, I'm not saying it's bad to be a consultant. I want everybody to be a consultant. You know, money gives yeah. that financial freedom. It takes away all the worries of life. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know? Uh, so, I mean, it's your choice. Okay. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> personally, I would want everybody to be a consultant. Well, yes, I... Maybe when you start to be older, you can't be yeah, a, a yeah, new self. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. right, that's right. So, so yeah, that's the career and uh, SAP we have. Well, so, via consulta is uh, very stressful. Um, sorry? Via consulta of SAP is very stressful. Uh, uh, a lot of stress. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you have to work for long hours. The stress will obviously be there. Always will okay. be there. You know, you you have to keep your client happy. And uh, the client is not an easy person to deal with. Uh, he will ask a lot of things which, you know, which is deviating from the SAP standard, which SAP recommends that it should not be done. But then the client will say that, I want it to be done. Mm -hmm. So you can't say up front on his face, no. You can't tell him no on his face. Uh, there's a certain way you deal with him. So there are a lot of things that you have to keep in mind. Plus the subject knowledge itself. SAP subject itself is so vast uh, and finance is a very critical module. Finance is the lifeblood of a business, the most most important module in SAP. I'm not taking away anything from other modules, I'm not saying MM is not important, I'm not saying SD is not good. Every module has its own importance but finance is the most most critical module of all if finance fails, everything else fails. Okay. So, being a finance consultant is not that easy. I'm not saying it is tough. All I'm saying is it is so vast, the subject is so vast that it requires practice, everyday daily practice. Finance is not like other modules. It is subdivided into general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, bank accounting, uh, then we have asset accounting, controlling, controlling is divided into another five sub-modules. So it is very vast subject to, to, mm -hmm. to understand which figures hit which areas, why this journal entry, why this report is showing this figure. You need to know the subject well and for that practice is very important. Okay, and uh, could I ask you, Ram, after this course, when I finish the course, mm -hmm. I will be ready ready in the low level for the end user or consultant? I will uh, understand you, SAP you, you, in that level? You will be, this is a consultant's program. Okay. So, that's where I'm coming at. So, as a career, an end user cannot know what consultant does because I said his job role is very limited. But a consultant on the other hand, so in short, what he does is, this person does his day-to-day -day activities, like I said. Uh, ah, okay. Business, we call it, it's just a flowery term, SAP has given business transactions. Because the mm -hmm. word journal entries, journal entries doesn't sound so good. Okay, so, They've given a term business transactions, the the day-to-day -day activities of end user. Okay. A consultant on the other hand has two jobs to do. One is configuration.
or customizations, both are the same. Mm -hmm. And the second one is he should also have the knowledge of business transactions. Now why do you think he should have the knowledge of business transactions? Simple reason. Why do you think so? Well, as a consultant, I can say that, you know, I have done the configurations. Mr. End User, mm -hmm. you can start using the system. You can start posting your entries. I can say that. My job is done. But why does he need to have the knowledge of business transactions, the consultant? Because he needs to Let add me. up the, the end user um, a request because no, they are working for the end user. Yeah. Let's go back to, let's forget SAP. Let's go back mm -hmm. to the bike example. You have given me a request to modify the bike according mm -hmm. to your specifications. I have modified the bike. Now the business transactions in this case would be you riding the bike at a particular speed, at a speed at which you enjoy. My job is to deliver the bike to you. Why should I know at what speed you enjoy the ride? Uh, mm. What all tricks you do with the bike? Why is it important for me to know that? As a mechanic, I have done all the modifications and configurations. There are two reasons for this. <laughs> a consultant should know business transactions because reason number one, and reason number two, testing. Before handing over the bike to you, I have to check if the bike has been properly done. If I give you the bike without testing, what if a couple of nuts fall down from the front wheel? That's bad. Mm -hmm. So before delivering the bike to you, I have to test if the bike is in good condition. What work I have done is good. Okay. So I will go for a test drive. I will check if all my configurations are correct, if all the modifications that you have requested for has been done in a proper manner. Then training. I will make you aware of all the pros and cons about the system. So all the configurations, say the end user is posting 10 journal entries. I as a consultant will post those 10 entries in SAP and check for errors. If there are errors appearing, then I have done something wrong at the configuration level. Something wrong has gone in the customization. So I'll rectify these customizations and again test these 10 journal entries. If there are no errors, I'll give training to the end user. So I was saying the end user was working in Sage for about 10, 15 years. So Sage, in, Sage is now in, is in his blood. You wake him up and sleep, he will do magic in Sage. But SAP is a new system for him. The consultant has to give training as a consultant, I'm going to tell the end user, now no more Sage, SAP has been implemented. These are the activities which you were doing in Sage and now you're going to do it in SAP in this manner. I will also give him documentation with screenshots and tell him how to do these activities in SAP. Mm -hmm. so, so from that purpose perspective, a consultant has a much more larger role to play. Okay. 
Okay. An end user, on the other hand, once he has learned everything, he goes about doing his job as usual. All his daily transactions, which he used to do it in Sage, he will now do it in SAP. Let's now start with ASAP methodology. Can you just give me five minutes? I'll be back. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, my friend, I'm back. Hello, yep, I'm yeah. back. Right. So, ASAP methodology is a roadmap prescribed by SAP for successful implementation of SAP at the client's place. It's a five-step process to be followed by the consulting company. The process of implementing SAP, a roadmap, prescribed by SAP. Five-step process to be followed sequentially. So process, five-step for successful implementation. So, the process of implementing SAP afresh and removal of the old ERP. That's what is ASAP methodology. ASAP refers to accelerated SAP. SAP stands for System Application Product and Data Person. So, our step one would be project preparation. Step two, business blueprint. The most important step of two is divided into two. The first phase is called as is. And the second phase To be. So 
realization is the third phase. Fourth step. Final preparation. Finally, go live. Support. And the most important is the business blueprint. Yes, this is the most critical phase. If this is a failure, might as well pack bags and go back. Okay. The consulting company has to ensure, the consultants have to ensure that they have made complete record of the business process. Okay. So first let us look at project preparation. As soon as ABC says that, you know, we are interested to implement SAP in our organization, IBM cannot come with a complete team of consultants. It cannot come with a full team. At this stage, only the senior people will go to the client side the project manager, delivery head, functional heads. Three, four, five people will go to the client's place, client's location to understand what business is into, how many branches are there, how many number of employees are present, or is the turnover. Only after knowing these basic information, they can decide how many modules needs to be implemented. You cannot implement all the modules given by SAP. What if it is a small organization? It does not require HR. HR, it can simply use uh, Excel. Mm -hmm. ABC can use Excel for its HR function. So it does not need a complex system like SAP. So they will decide how many need, module needs to be implemented. FICO, MM, SD, PP, some basic okay. modules. Okay. Then they will design a team size. A team will be decided. FICO about 10 consultants. Materials management about 8 consultants. SD, 8 consultants. Technical people, uh, 4 ABAP guys and 4 basis consultants. So like this they will decide a team size, the team leader a manager who will be responsible for delivery of the project and and yes how soon will they resolve the issues the SLA the service level agreement say you have an issue the user has an issue how soon can the consultant resolve it that time frame has to be committed by the consultant High priority tickets will be resolved within two hours. Uh, medium priority tickets about six hours. Low priority issues about you have one day's time, 24 hours. So like this, the SLAs will be agreed upon. And finally, the contract will be signed between the consulting firm and the client okay now these mm -hmm. people will come back and the team which has been decided will now go to the client site each and every consultant each team of consultant I mean each team of consultants go to their respective departments the FICO consultant goes to the finance department. The MM consultant goes to the purchase or procurement division. SD consultant goes to the sales and distribution, to the sales department. 
PP production consultant goes to the factory shop floor. So likewise, each and every individual consultant, they go to their respective department. Now, why do you, why do they go to their respective departments? Because every department needs something uh, different things, different models or different priorities. Yeah. So every team has a set process. Finance has a set process. MM has a specific process. PP has a specific pro process. So you need to understand these processes and design a system accordingly for the client. That is what is called as is, as the way it is, as is. Documentation of the existing process is called as is. <coughs> I'm so sorry. So documentation of the existing process is called as is. As is, okay. To be is nothing but to be how the existing process is going to be incorporated in SAP simple the existing process how you're going to put it in the SAP system is what is called the to be document now when a blueprint is prepared and uh, approval is taken from both the manager and the client the next step realization begins you'll receive your login ID password and start working in the SAP system okay. you'll do all your configurations or customizations once configuration and customization is done realization begins uh, I'm sorry final preparation Final preparation is nothing but testing. All kind of tests happen. Battery of advanced tests to see that the configurations are correct. There are no errors. If any errors appear, we'll go back to the customization. Hello? Miriam, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me?
you can see my screen right yes okay so final preparation once the customizations have been done once the configurations have been done there are, there's a battery of tests which is performed to validate that the business transactions are working properly if any errors arise we'll go back to the customization we'll rectify it come back again and test one of the test which is done is uat at the end uat is performed the user acceptance testing user acceptance testing is nothing but training given to the end user mm -hmm. the training has to given a written undertaking that you know i have received full training from the consultant and uh, i can confidently work in sap from now on i have received the documents screenshots so he tells his management that he's he can start working in sap go live is nothing but all the data is migrated to sap from the old system all the data is transferred to sap and the date from which the user starts working in sap that is called go live okay support is nothing but once the user starts doing transactions in sap on his own even then he will face some errors he will have problems so he will need support the support team will be present to help him out they will look into the issues and give resolutions so this is the complete process of implementation this is asap methodology okay okay now let us start with our financial accounting fi refers to financial accounting and CEO refers to controlling. What we call controlling in SAP, in our accounting language, it is called cost accounting. That's what we call it cost accounting in accounting language. In SAP, it's called controlling. In financial accounting, we have first chapter enterprise structure, first chapter, first topic, Second topic, financial accounting, global settings. New. General ledger accounting, new. Accounts receivable, accounts payable, mm -hmm. bank, asset. Asset refers to fixed asset. Okay. Tax. Uh, see, tax on sales and purchase. I cannot give you a good background on tax on sales and purchase. Because this topic, tax, differs from country to country. So the laws... Ah, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah, sorry? No, no, continue, please. Yeah. So the laws which pertain to my country, 
may not be the same which is being followed in your country. Okay. okay. So, but I can give you a general overview on how to configure these in SAP. You can modify it according to your uh, tax laws. Okay. CO refers to controlling. General controlling. Mm. Cost element. Cost centers. Profit center. Internal orders. Then we have special topics like integration of FI with MM. An integration of FI with sales and distribution model. So we'll see in the end. Let us start our first topic, enterprise structure. Enterprise structure refers to the structure of the company. For whom are we doing the implementation? Their structure. Mm -hmm. Enterprise structure will divide it into two parts. First part, definition. And the second part, assignment. Now under definition, there are some activities. Under assignment, there are some activities. Let's go to the system. You have access now, do you, to the system? Um, me? Yeah? No, 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 I don't have. Then how, how will you practice then? Uh, I asked to the to the team how I'm going to connect to the course, and they told me you will show me. So I understand now that you are in your SAP, mm -hmm. and I need half other SAP for practice. So I will download it today or yeah today okay. after the course because I don't have any access. Is I don't know if it's free or not, or but well, ah, okay. I will. Uh, okay. They, they didn't inform me, so I will ask to the to the team. Yeah. Just tell them you can blame me if you want. <laughs> no, 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 because I I don't have the ACP in my computer. I don't know if I can download or I can connect free or uh -huh. I don't know. Maybe there are one trial. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there are various ways of connecting. Uh, you can get it connected through a web browser or you can have this downloaded on your computer this SAP okay. logon screen I mean the logon iQuare pad uh, but I'm not sure how where from you can get it so they technically okay, you can, the SAP team over there they, maybe they can help you out with that okay So you put your user and your password. Yeah, they've given me 
a username and a password and enter mm -hmm. okay as soon as you log into SAP screen this is a screen that will appear easy access Uh, easy access is the place where all the business transactions are done. Easy access for business transactions. Okay. The user come can come over here and do whatever he wants, GL, ARAP, bank, whatever. Now the other part is to do customizations or configurations. Right? Now business transactions done in easy access screen. The customizations or the configurations are done in a screen called IMG. IMG refers to implementation guide. Now, how to go to IMG? Easy access, very easy. As soon as you log in, the easy screen up, easy access screen appears. Now, to go to IMG screen or to do any activity in SAP, SAP is completely governed by T codes. Or transaction codes it's it's a unique code which is applicable for that particular activity and that transaction code cannot be replicated for any other activity so to go to IMG screen there is a particular T code to post a purchase entry there is a transaction code. To do each and every activity, there is a unique T code which is not, which is different, which is not the same. Code. Yeah, T code, or it's called transaction code. Okay. To go to IMG screen, T code to go to IMG. SPRO. SPRO is the transaction code to go to IMG screen. Now where do we put this SPRO? In this space. This is called transaction code bar. Okay. SPRO. And hit enter on the keyboard or this green button enter. Okay. When you hit enter, it will take us to the execute project screen. Please click on SAP reference IMG. Mm -hmm. And now this will take us to the IMG screen. Display IMG. All the modules are available in this. All modules. Our job is financial accounting and controlling. Oh, okay. Individual consultants, they will pick up their modules and they will work on it. SD, mm -hmm. MM, logistics. Our job is in financial accounting and controlling. Okay. This green button takes okay. us one screen back. This yellow button 
exits the screen altogether and this is the cancel transfer. Back. Now just give me uh, two minutes. I'll wash my face feeling very sleepy. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, okay. It's very hot in India, right? <laughs> yeah, it's extremely hot now. You, you, you want five minutes? Uh, or... yeah. Yes. Um, I, w I will make a coffee and I'm coming back. Oh, sure. Thanks. I'll help. Yeah. Just five yeah, okay. Yeah. Take five minutes or eight minutes and we come back. Okay? Sure, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So to go to IMG screen, transaction code SPRO. Okay. Now there are two ways of doing any activity in SAP. One is by the use of transaction codes and the other is by using a navigation path. So to go to IMG screen, you can either use the transaction code SPRO which is of course the faster way of reaching the activity or you have a navigation path SAP easy access SAP menu we open this tree SAP menu okay. mm, tools Customizing IMG Execute Project. This will also take us to the same place. Double click on Execute Project. It takes us to the same place. Click on SAP Reference IMG. And here comes the IMG screen. So transaction codes are easier and faster way of reaching the activity, that's all. But it's also important to have knowledge of the path because in some cases we don't have the transaction code so we have to necessarily come by the path. Okay, let's start with our first topic, enterprise structure. SPRO, small or caps, it's not case specific, anything, enter. Oh, okay. okay. Click on SAP Reference IMG. Enterprise structure. Now enterprise structure is divided into two, definition and assignment. Under definition, we'll define some activities. Under assignment, we'll link those. Okay, under definition, financial accounting, open financial accounting. The first activity under financial accounting, define company. Now before going to define a company, a company in SAP means the group head, the parent company, the holding company. The holding company is called company in SAP. So for example, we have a group head like uh, say anything, say ABC group. Oh, uh Yes. Oh, okay, I, I was thinking that you were waiting, thinking, uh, okay, uh, yeah, ABC, okay. Uh, I, was, I was just wondering what to put, that's a ABC group. Now, ABC can have multiple business units. ABC can have ABC... Pharma, Pharmaceuticals, ABC Motors, ABC 
iron and steel we can have many we can have lots of subsidiary companies in accounting language we call this as the holding company the group company yes and this we call as the subsidiary companies mm -hmm. in sap the holding company is simply called company uh, okay and these are called company codes company codes company codes this is one okay. company code this is another company code this is another company code we'll see this okay. next first let us define a company so define company a transaction code for define company is ox15 so if you want to define a company you can either come through this path img then open enterprise structure open definition you can open financial accounting or simply you can put ox15 here and go to define company enter it'll directly take us to define company screen Mm -hmm. I want more thing this button over here this creates yes. a new window okay say so you are working in one window you don't want to close that window it has some vital information you are processing but you need some other information also to toggle between multiple windows this creates a new window this button okay mm -hmm. okay let's create a company this clock button is the execute button execute okay new entries it will accept up to 6 characters only 6 yes can be alphabets can be numbers alphanumeric any combination okay, what are okay. okay but then in the company name you can put uh, yeah. more yeah okay all the address details city uh, sorry uh, where do you where are you where do you stay London okay now I don't mind you can put the city that you want <laughs> <laughs> okay country if you press this okay. small button there's a small okay. button next to the country key this okay. is the help button. This will display the number okay. of countries that SAP supports. There are about 237 countries. Uh, UK or Great Britain, I think. Yeah. Great Britain, okay. There's no UK. There's only GB. Great Britain, okay. Language, English. Mm -hmm. Currency. GBP. Ah, uh, GBP. Sorry, GBP. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. And save. It lasts for a request number. This number will be generated on a random basis. We don't give any number click on create request this number is generally for you know to track which user has done this activity so we'll have to give a short description so there's no escape there you can you things can be tracked you cannot say that you know I cannot say online fi08 belongs to me this is my user ID so 
can easily be tracked. Uh, you cannot say that I have not done this activity. Because uh, with this code, they can see that you yeah. made this activity. I'll, I'll show okay. you. I'll show you that. So sh give short description. They, this is uh, my style. Companies generally have their own formats they follow. I have my own style of writing. <laughs> uh, different sub-module names. We are doing enterprise structure. So I'll store all my enterprise structure activities under one number. Give a short description and save. That generates a number, some number. I have not given this. It comes on a random basis, 420. Mm -hmm. Data was saved. Back. Uh, how do you save, sorry? Uh, or was automatic save, save it? Okay, I'll show you to the next step. Okay. Come back. This is the back button. This green mm -hmm. button takes you on screen back. Second activity. Edit, copy, delete, check, company code. Mm -hmm. Edit, copy, delete, check, company code. Transaction code for this activity. OX02. Okay. Now, before going into this, all the subsidiary companies are called company codes. The definition of a company code is it's an organizational unit for which financial statements are prepared for external reporting. Organizational unit for which financial statements are prepared financial statements refers to the profit and loss account balance sheet cash flow statement fund flow statement prepared for external reporting external reporting refers to External reporting refers to reporting to the external people. Now and the who, other company? Or... Who would be the external people? You are running a business. You mm -hmm. have a huge empire. Who, who would be the external people to you? Uh, can be provider or... Uh, some customers or mm -hmm. some the other business company that we have between our company and these people the mm -hmm. these people are the people who are interested in the financial health of your organization uh -huh. people like shareholders stakeholders banks mm -hmm. auditors mm -hmm. government authorities but they have invested money in your organization and they need to know what is going on. They need to know what is your return on rate of return, rate of return, what is the payback period, when can they get the money. Banks have lent huge amount of money to the business. Auditors, the statutory auditors sign the financial statements. They want to know if everything is correct. Shareholders okay. have invested lots of money. New investors, say if you are a promoter, okay? Okay, yeah. I ask you to, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm running an organization. I ask you, you know, I ask you invest uh, 100 million in my company. Will you do? Will you invest? First, I need to check, of course. Why? You're How my, uh, say you're my best friend. Yeah, 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 but in money, in money we are not friends. Oh, in money we don't have friends. Oh, I see. 
<laughs> okay. <coughs> In business, no friends, only friends we need to check the health of the company. <laughs> okay. Yes. Right. I mean, my point is exactly right. You need to satisfy yourself how my company is doing. You will compare my five years balance sheet, you will check the profit and loss account, you will check the payback period, the rate of uh, interest, return on investment, all these things, all these information will help you in deciding whether or not to invest anything in my company. Okay. These information can be derived from the financial statements. Okay. Now to prepare financial statements in SAP, we need a company code. The smallest organizational unit in FI. Now let's say uh, ABC Pharma. Execute transaction code OX02. Now double click on edit company code data. and click on new entries okay. company code will allow you a maximum of four characters alphabets, numbers, alphanumerics say ABC1 ABC1 one, yeah it's going to say okay. ABC1 ABC1 Character, do you say four. is four? Okay. Four. For company, it is six. Okay. London, country, India. Uh, Now there's a small tick mark in the currency field. It's a small tiny mm -hmm. tick mark. It mm -hmm. means that the field is a mandatory field. Without filling this field, we cannot save the data. If I go ahead ah, and okay. save, it will throw an error. Fill in ah, all okay. required entry fields. The ah, currency okay. field okay. is a required field. GBP and now save. Mm -hmm. uh, save. Oh, I very safe. Yeah. Okay. Keep the title, name mm -hmm. of the company. Uh, all these we fill in real time. I'm just skipping this and giving the country, Great Britain. As soon as you enter the country, the regions of that particular country will appear. London. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's Great Birmania. Yeah. Is it this? Okay. Yes. Okay. All this we fill in real time. I'm just skipping this postal code, telephone number, email, fax. Mm -hmm. Copy. Enter. I'm not creating a new request. I'm saving it under the same request because it is a part of enterprise structure. If you want to create a new new request, click on new request, give the description, click on save, and the screen uh, will appear. Okay. And now click on continue. data was saved. Come back. Third activity. Define credit control area. Transaction code OB45. Define credit control area. Sorry, Ram. At the moment, we, we use the fine company mm -hmm. and edit, copy, delete, check company code at the moment, the 15 and 02 code, no? Okay. Yes. The third one, 
third activity defined credit control area OB45 okay. transaction code mm -hmm. execute new entries okay name of the credit control area will keep it the same as that of our company code there is no specific reason you can give any four characters of your choice but even in real time the same name is used same name as that of the company code is used uh, to easily refer so for easy remembrance currency GBP credit limit is used to monitor the uh, credit limit of customers okay. this is also uh, done in conjunction with the sales department what is the credit limit the client will have to give it to you in real time over here I'm putting a maximum amount okay. and save Okay. Under the same request number, back. Back to IMG screen. Our fourth activity. Define business area. Define business area. Business area refers to a separate set of different areas of operations. Different area of operations refers to business area. Now, different set of operations, different areas of operations can refer to different branches like London branch, Wales branch or it can also be on the basis of different departments production department, finance department, admin department can be another business area how the client wants it has to be said by him Okay, if oh. for example by country, so by product, or by, uh, as per you said, one is finance, so there is yeah. production. Yeah. Okay. The client has to tell you in what uh, manner he wants to set up the business area. Transaction code OX03, execute. New entries. L zero. L O. Ah, L O. Ah, London. Okay. London. It lacks up only four characters, so. Okay. Then. Uh, then we can put A B. What else? S P S P. Okay. Spain business. Okay. So, so in this is in this example we are doing by countries the yeah. company. Yeah. Okay. Fifth activity. Define segment. segment okay 
Hello. Can you hear me? All right. So yes, segment refers to the various operations of your business or the various products that you deal in. Say, for example, new entries. A, B. Uh, we're in pharma. So, uh, mm -hmm. I'll put uh, the various products that I have, say, I can have uh, painkillers. PA paracetamol. Oh. Save. Now, whatever has been defined has to be linked with the company code. Assignment is nothing but linking. Everything has to be linked with the company code. IMG, Enterprise Structure, uh, now please open Assignment, Financial Accounting, uh, see if you click on this black, uh, you know, black inverted arrow, uh, it will open the tree, Assignment, this tray, yeah, sounds, okay. uh, Financial Accounting, the first activity under assignment, financial accounting, assign company code to company. Assign company code to company, transaction code OX16. So here we are going to say ABC Pharma is linked to ABC Group. So we are going to link the company code ABC1 to the company ABC group. Execute. Mm -hmm. Position. Assignment is a fairly simple straightforward activity. Our company code will be available here. Click on position. Our company code. Uh, our company code was ABC1. Yeah. Enter. And enter the company name if you know. If you do not know, please click on this help button. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. ABC group. Select and enter. If you know, you can type it ABCGRP and save. Okay. Please come back to the IMG screen. Second activity, assign company code to credit control area. Assign company code to credit control area. Transaction code OB38. Mm -hmm. Same, click on position. position. Let's find out our company code, ABC1. Enter. 
the name of our credit control area is the same ABC1 it's for this very reason we give the same name it's easy to remember or it will be there in this help list and save enter <clears throat> okay. okay that is it with assignment and we have done with enterprise structure the basic structure of an organization the company for which we are going to do the implementation We'll begin with financial accounting global settings tomorrow. Global okay. settings consists of about nine or ten settings, basic settings, without okay. which these accounting activities cannot be done. These are our hardcore accounting activities. Okay. In order to so there is the easier one is the first and the second. Sorry? The easier part is the first and the second. The other are harder, are more difficult. Uh, I'm sorry. Because you say that the most, the most important you say that is from general. And yeah, the those are. See, I'm, I'm not saying which is important or which is not. Uh, all I'm saying is uh, these are the actual subject. Okay. Accounting subject. Okay. This is the actual accounting subject from GL our entry posting, our journal entries, the ledger knowledge, finance. In order to do this, subject-wise, there is no connection. There's no connection subject-wise. But these are some basic 9 or 10 settings without which these accounting activities cannot be done. For example, I need to tell the system which year is the client following. Which year, as in the sense, are we following calendar year, January to December? Or are we following April to March? What is the 12 month reporting period that the client is following? Then I need to tell the system in which month is the posting possible? Can I make um, uh, an entry in the month of January? Can I make an entry in the month of April? Which is an open period, which is a closed period? then every level of employees can post only up to a certain limit. Not all employees can post a higher limit. Say junior level executives can post only up to a certain limit. Then if it exceeds that limit, then it will have to go for authorization. The team leader has to authorize it. If it goes above a certain limit, the manager will have to approve it. So these are some basic settings. Then currencies, foreign currencies. What is the rate of foreign currencies? Uh, what are the different foreign currencies that the client is dealing with? So these are some basic settings that we do in uh, global settings. Okay. okay. So I will place the recording in the folder.